Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to a special Sunday afternoon session where I'm coming back on to finish the free readings from this morning's session because I got to zero of the free readings. Thank you for all the donations. It's what allows me to continue to do the free readings. So um, thank you guys for your patience too and waiting for your free readings. So I had some lunch and I am back. So we're rejuvenated and we're ready to go. Um, there's no chat because I'm not taking any new questions. Um, I'm just completing the ones from this morning. I will be back next Friday morning for the next free readings. If you want answers in between now and then on new questions, um, first, I, I do offer personal readings. All that information's in the description box. But if you're not able to pay for readings, I get it. I have a ton of free content too. A lot of pick a cards. I have like a, a lunar eclipse pick a card for tomorrow night. Uh, e, uh, what else? What else? Oh, eclipse pick a card on its own. Uh, eclipse, like it's an eclipse. Uh, what did I say? Warning? Was it a warning? Eclipse. Uh, but there's that that one, and then also equinox, which is for three months. Aries season, uh, and there's pick a cards for love. Timeless pick a cards. Uh, for love, finance, all that. Even there's a um, 2024 energy forecast that gives you the whole year picture for uh, love, money, and career. It splits out the year into three sections of four months each, uh, a blessing for each that Spirit wants you to know about, and then some additional information for that period too. So a lot of in free information if you're interested in that too. So I think that's it. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so we are live, all right. So that's good here. And I feel like there was something else. Oh, yeah. When I'm done with the readings, I will post a comment listing the order in which all of the readings were completed so you can locate your reading much easier. And uh, if you're enjoying the free readings, give it a thumbs up. That does uh, tell me you're enjoying the free readings. Also helps uh, spread the Zen love and you're part of the love tsunami. So thank you guys for doing that. All right, let's get into it. I'm going to continue to use this beautiful deck of Craft Cards Tarot. And let's see what we got going on here. What did I hit my camera? <laughs> Look, it's like off balance here. Whoa, whoa, what happened? <laughs> okay, maybe I'll move it a little this way. There we go. Good enough. <laughs> All right, so we left off with Macaroni. You were up first. I love that name. <laughs> so let's take a look here, Macaroni. And I'm just going to shuffle all these cards for the entire reading, the energy for all in order. And I'm going to shuffle those three times. And then do these three times. One and two. And three. All right. And then... <clears throat> To three piles, top, middle, bottom. All right. So we are good to go. So macaroni, you wanted to know the general for the upcoming week. <clears throat> and you've got the Knight of Swords coming in. So the Knight of Swords does tell me that there's this movement of thought and belief and mindset that's coming in here for you. But I feel like there's these challenges that come up. Whatever the triggers are for this week, just know that um, they're meant for you. I know, right? It's like, ugh, no more triggers. But um, it's an important time here. We've got a lot of different energies happening astrologically that are going to help you release some of these old thoughts and old beliefs of these triggers that you're like, I'm tired of, of having this feeling and this reaction that comes up. And, um, and so this helps you with that. So, you know, it's like this quest for seeing things from a different perspective. So when you start to feel like anything rise up within you, just take a big deep breath if you can, just, and just, you know, don't like sigh in front of the person, like, oh, really, you know, <laughs> that'll make things worse. <laughs> but it's like just slow breathing, deep breaths will help you stay present instead of going into fight or flight mode, right? So I like this breathing, just learn, do some breathing. And if you have not looked into breathing uh, exercises and stuff, definitely, um, you know, you can check them out on YouTube. They give a 
ton. Just search for breathing exercises. You can find any that resonate with you. But I feel like this is an important week for that. Mercury's in retrograde. Communication's already, you know, with people. So I feel like it's an important thing to step back. Don't attack. Don't run away um, because it will just follow you anyway, right? Because wherever we go, there we are. Uh, so if you look at it, it'll uh, help things move in a significant way. So I like that for you. So that's what they have for you, Macaroni. So many blessings to you. And then Crystal's Day, you'd like a general reading. All right. Well, you got the King of Pentacles. So it is a week of abundant feeling of the fullness of the outside world. I feel like the outside world is really demanding of your energy this week. You know, it's like you're just being drawn outward. A lot of activity in the outside world. And you don't have to say yes to everything. <laughs> you have permission to say no. The Four of Pentacles, you know, we have uh, is what the king really learns a lot from. Because he, of course, experiences all of the pentacle suit. But the Four of Pentacles is one of the big ahas he has in his life. Where he realized when he was trying to define his, his worth... By the outside world, he felt unstable. It's because the things that we look at in the outside world are unstable. And so when we define ourselves by them, we feel unstable. Relationships, situations, and things are the three boxes or cups that we look for to be fulfilled through. And <clears throat> of course, this is where we realize people, people change, people walk away, people pass away. So relationships are unstable situations like jobs and education and social status and accomplishments all that stuff never stays the same it doesn't last long unstable and things oh my gosh our bank accounts our bodies possessions break down deteriorate blow up burn down stolen all unstable eventually the king learns i'm just tired of the instability of the outside world and the disappointment they turned inward and upward and they found the only stable thing we find in this realm which is the unconditional, eternal love from above. Eternal is very stable. Unconditional, nothing you can do to lose it, stable. So we have our foundation of pricelessness instead of retail price where we end up on the clearance rack on the outside world. So I like this for you uh, coming up here. And I feel like this is the outside world is trying to draw you out and... The draw before was, well, I got to do these things because they would define me. But I feel like you're realizing they don't define me. So I don't have to say yes to everything. I only have to say yes to the things that I want to do. The things that I feel like, oh, I have, I'm supposed to do, have to do. You can opt out. Start small if you're scared. I know the first time I said no, <gasps> I said I had to start saying no on the inside, even though I said yes on the outside till my brain and my being was like, we're okay with no. And it escaped out of my mouth and it turned out fine. Look, I'm still alive. <laughs> All right. So that's what they have for you. Crystal's day, many blessings to you. And then Marie Jones. Hello. Hello. What, what people think of you at work. So overall, <clears throat> they feel like you're a patient person here with the seven of pentacles. I feel like you're a hard worker um, as well with this. And, um, and that's the consensus, you know, when we look at what people think of us, you know, there's so many different, in fact, like there's, if all those were people, all those coins, so many people have different viewpoints of life because we don't see the world as it is. We see the world as we are. So when, if we, I, if I asked you, what do you think of those seven people, your opinion of them will be different from someone else out of those seven people looking at all of you, same thing, right? It's like you're going to get seven different stories from everybody about everybody. And it's because we only recognize and we see the world through our own filters. So, you know, it's like, who knows what's really going on out there? <laughs> because we only see through our own filtration uh, until we start seeing things from a higher perspective. From spirit's point of view, they see truth. We just see conditioning. Um, and so, you know, when we ask, well, what do they see? Well, you know, what they see is a patient person, someone who will, is persistent, will keep going. You'll do the tasks and, you know, push through them and get them done. Um, 
you know, and, um, and, and I like that, um, you know, overall consensus kind of energy. But remember that no one can see something in someone else that they don't have a piece of it within themselves either. The good stuff and the frustrating, irritating things too. So I, I like Spirit kind of saying, you know, it's more a more productive use of our energy, you know, instead of being concerned about what other people think of us, because it's none of our business, because it really has little to do with us, is what do I think of everyone else? How do I feel about everyone else? What do I see? Because they're all mirrors. So, you know, like when people look at you, if a monkey looks at you, they see a monkey. If a camel looks at you, they see a camel, whatever it is, right? So whatever you see when you look at those, there's a piece of yourself looking back at you in those mirrors. So I feel like that's what Spirit wants you to know right now, Marie. So many blessings to you. And then content, you want to know, oh, wow, will you be laid off this week? I don't feel like you will. Um, you have the Empress energy here, which is new birth and harvest and abundance. If you do, then it's just going to be, you know, they're either going to give you, uh, <laughs> you'll, you'll you're going to turn out fine in any case here. They're either going to keep you, and that's you're keeping your abundance. Or if they let you go, they're going to give you a severance package or some sort of money. Um, and if not that, then you leave and you find this job that's even better for you. And you're like, oh, thank God they did that. Um, with the Empress, it's all victory. It's all abundance. It's all birth. It's all great stuff. So um, <clears throat> regardless of what's going to happen, you're going to be fine. So you're like, all right. I like that. <laughs> All right. And that's what they have for you, content. So many blessings to you. All right. We'll go to the next screen here. There we go. Whoops. Oh, stop. Stop. Okay. There we go. <laughs> Mouse gun wild. Mouse gun wild. Stop. Why are you behaving that way? Oh, there we go. Okay. We're good. <clears throat> so, day baby 777, you're up and you wanted a general reading. So you got the Ten of Pentacles, and the Ten of Pentacles, of course, is one of the abundant cards here coming in. Um, and this has to do with, you know, what a fullness of life means. Because there's relationships in there, there's family, there's the dog, there's ancestry, there's abundance, there's a home and a palace. It's the drawing out of the physical world, and I just feel like the energy that uh, you're going through has to do with a lot of uh, physical Taurus energy. Don't know what this is all about, but there is this, um, you know, this focal point, this clarity really of coming in of what you want and what you don't want. And just to feel like you're going to enter this period of time that's coming here where you're getting a lot of stuff in the outside world. Like it's not mental stuff. It's not emotional. It's not energetic. It's interactions with humans in it, but it's the humans in your life and it's money and possessions and different things that come in and things that you were told, this is supposed to fulfill you and you get it and you're like, where's the fulfillment? I'm waiting for it. You know, is it, is it a gift with purchase? Does it come later? What's happening? And I feel like you're really realizing a lot about the outside world that it's not all that it's cracked up to be. <laughs> That's funny. But it's like, you know what? What am I, what am I really, what would truly make me happy? And I like this journey that you're on because it's what it takes for us. Because we're all taught answers are out there, and we go out there and we're like, where? I've been searching for how many decades and I can't find it anywhere. And like, oh, I'm sorry, it's in here. <laughs> My mistake. <laughs> You're like, you, ooh, why I oughta, you know. So I like this for you. I feel like it's a really this revelations of your um, attachment to the things of the outside world and outcomes. And it's this, but it's a beautiful revelation. This 10 of pentacles normally doesn't mean endings and beginnings, but I feel like it does create your desire to have, make some change in your outside world from it. All right, so that's what they have for you, Day Baby. So many blessings to you. And then Day Sturgis, you want to know whatever comes out here for you. All right. Well, we know you've been in a transformation, right? The hanged man is like a butterfly <clears throat> cocoon. You know, it's the um, the timing, the transformation. 
it, you know, it's like there's this pause where sometimes it feels like there's inactivity, but just know that there's been a lot going on beneath the surface, a lot been going on. I don't know if you've been dreaming a whole lot. I feel like you might wake up and feeling exhausted, but I feel like it's because you've been doing so much subconsciously in your dreams and with your shadow and your higher self and your spiritual team. They're using your dream time to do a lot of transformation and a lot of liquidation, like a, how a caterpillar um, turns into like caterpillar soup liquid um, before it starts forming into the butterfly. So it loses some of its identity to form a new identity. And I feel like that's what you're going through right now. Um, 12 is the hangman. It's really standing out here. So I don't know if December is, is important or the 12th of, of a month uh, is important for you. But I feel like the 12 is a um, is a uh, important number for you that's coming up. Um, so I feel like you'll know what that means. I feel like that will resonate with you. So that's what's coming in right now for you, <laughs> Dysturgis. Uh, Dysturgis, sorry. Uh, many blessings to you. <clears throat> And then Happy Pill, you wanted an April reading. So let's take a look here and see what's coming in here, April. Well, April, you have some new information that's coming in to you between now and the end of April that makes you, you want to choose to go a different direction than where you were before. And it's a positive thing. It's not something that's like, oh, God, I, I got to give up and go this way. It's like, it's a positive change. It's like you learn some new information about whatever this decision making or this whatever is unfolding in your life. And you're like, you know what? I've been waiting for an answer on things and I got my answer and it just totally changes the direction I was heading. And it's okay. You're not, you're not wasting any time. It's like you're, you're on this freeway headed towards this location here. Um, and you would have had a got on this, um, highway to reach this location too but right in the nick of time you're getting the information like oh look there's my exit and you go off this way instead of going here you're deciding to go this direction if that makes sense so um i like it because you're getting the clarity you need you're getting the information you need and i like this gentleness that you're having with yourself now too where you're like yeah i don't feel like i wasted any time i've learned some great things and now i'm altering course and i don't feel like i'm you know, have to backtrack. It's like, you know, if you ever get like on a freeway that has no exits, and you're like, oh no, and you have to go down and exit and come all the way back and then take the correct one. No, it's, woo, look at nick of time. I like that. <laughs> all right. So that's what they have for you, happy pills. So many blessings to you. And then, Julie, any blessing uh, regarding career? Yeah, you know, this is a blessing in disguise with the Ten of Swords. The Ten of Swords is this energy of these are all the small T truths, supposed to, shoulds, need tos, have tos, musts. They're not dead, they're exhausted, trying to live up to everyone else's expectations. And you're like, I'm done, I'm just done, I'm sick and tired of feeling sick and tired and um, being exhausted trying to please them and them and them and them and them. And, them and and they're even contradictory where how are you going to make all that work? And a lot of frustration, a lot of uh, mental confusion about what you want to do, where you want to go, you know, for your career. Clarity is coming. Ten of sorts. Endings and beginnings. You're letting go of these old small T truths. You're really aligning with your capital T truth of who do you want to be? How do you uniquely want to share this love in your heart with the world? And I feel like you're really going, I know what I want to do. Like, I want to become a nurse. I'm going to go to nursing school. Um, let me go online. Look, there's a nursing school a mile away. Look, they offer scholarships. Look, um, I can get a loan for the rest. Look, they give you um, pay, you know, so you, you can focus fully on the nursing degree. You know, it's that kind of thing that I feel like just everything just unfolds and starts to happen. And that feels like a blessing to me. So that's what they have for you, Julie. So many blessings to you. And then Kritika Mahotra. Hello. Hi. <laughs> it's your birthday. Happy early birthday to you. Uh, and you want to know, how will it go? You're still not able to decide what to do. All right. Well, got the King of Wands. So it is definitely going to be uh, fiery, happy, exciting, full of energy. 
uh, you know, time. And the King of Wands is you, you get to decide what it is. And, you know, it's emperor energy where instead of thinking, well, what does everyone think I should do? And da, 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 and what will make everyone else happy? It's your birthday. Go, you know what? I want to go play miniature golf. And if everyone's like, oh, I say, suck it up. We'll go, we're going to go do what you want on your birthday. So this is what we're going to do. And you're going to have fun. And, uh, you know, and you're going to smile the whole time and you're going to laugh hysterically when I tell you to, <laughs> you're going to, this is the King of Wands energy, right? You're like, I'm the emperor. I'm the king. This is my day. Everyone just come in, uh, and let's go have fun. Right. So I like this for you. It's, it's, uh, energy and whatever you focus your energy on is how it's going to, how it's going to go. You're the one that's going to choose whether you're happy about it or not. If you're depending on this long list of stuff that has to happen on the outside world and these people have to be there and that person has to act that way and I have to get these many gifts and this many things. Blah, 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 blah. If you go in it, no expectations. I just want to celebrate me and I don't care how I do it and whatever happens, then you're going to have a blast because you're going to have an abundant day. But if you have a long list of expectations, you're going to be disappointed and it's going to take so much energy just to get to zero. Eh, doesn't sound like a good birthday, right? So I like this. Uh, grab a hold of your magic wand and go, I'm going to focus on fun, not expectations or fears or what I feel is missing or wanting or what I hate. I'm going to focus on fun. And the answer to every question is fun. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right, Kritika, that's what they have for you. So many blessings to you. <laughs> All right. And then Grace 1111, and you want to know um, any information they'll give you about your soul purpose. You know, the Knight of Cups is movement of emotion and sharing that, that uh, Ace of Cups here, which, you know, your life purpose is to uniquely share the unconditional love you have in your heart with the world in your your own unique way, the way you want to do it. There's no like, okay, here's your your job when you go down there. No, it's like spirit. Um, it, there's no should or have to, you need to, supposed to. When we come down here, we come down here to experience the opposite of what we are so we can understand ourselves fully. And while we're down here, we're like, um, I want to share love. And that's our what our career and our life purpose really is at our core, our capital C career, not the human career. And it's like, how do I want to do that? And I get to decide, like the first person who decided they wanted to mix psychology with painting, created paint therapy. And wow, they're like, I get to live my dream because I'm doing what I want to do, paint and help people through therapy. And it's like, yeah, how do I, what are my interests and how can you bring those together? What are your passions? When's the last time your heart felt full? When's the last time your heart, you know, felt like it was singing? When's the last five times? And look and see if you see a pattern and uh, help that. If you're not sure too, um, there's this great book. I always refer to this when people talk about life purpose because Dharma is life purpose. And Sahara Rose, she wrote this book, beautiful wonderful, uh, hilarious, great energy too. She has a website, IamSaharaRose.com, and she has some free content on there, like some quizzes on the under the purpose tab. Um, that is your Dharma archetype. And it, uh, the email sends you two, so make sure to look at two because uh, there's one in the email. There's they, She gives you the primary and the secondary which is how you share your love with the world as far as like, for me, it's visionary, which is sharing in front of people like this. Um, and then um, like my second one was teacher and that's my podcast. I love providing information through teaching format too. And then, so you'll get yours. There's like nine, I think there's nine different archetypes and uh, taking that quiz helps you determine that. And then there's also under the your uh, Ayurveda, I probably mispronouncing that. I think it's Y U V E R D A. Underneath there, there's a dosha energy quiz too. It texts you about your which three types of energies you are that um, help you know how you approach things too. So very informative. And if it resonates, her book is great. I'm not affiliated at all. I'm just a fan. So if you're interested in that. All right, Grace. So that's a little bit of tidbit for you. So many blessings to you.
And then DFS, you are up. So financial reading. All right, let's take a look here. <clears throat> so you've got the Nine of Swords here, which is the Nightmare and Insomnia card. And this just um, is a message from Spirit around finances. It's, you know, what are you fearing? What What is the focus? What um, What are you not having in your life that you feel that you need? That helps you understand your fears, right? Because we're given a lot of small T truths, which is where all these are on the wall here. All these small T truths that are rooted in a fear of rejection, fear of failure, fear of being unlovable, not good enough, um, you know, starving, dying. You know, what is it that our fears are? Because when, you know, Spirit is saying, when you look at your finances and you look at your fears, you can release and transform them. And in the, the same kind of breath, I think we talked about a little bit about, you know, when we're focusing on our fears, we grow our fears, we draw them and attract them to us. If we focus on what we're grateful for around our finances already, then more finances come to us. But for focusing on what we feel is missing, what we want more of, uh, hating, all that, we grow and draw more of that in because our energy is what attracts things to us. So being aware of your fears around finances is an important thing right now because it does help you transform things and, and move things and release things too. So um, that's what's coming in there. If you're interested too, I'm not sure if I told you about this already, but I talk about it a lot, usually one, two, three times in a, a session. Um, it's, um, I have a playlist called Take 10 with Zen on my main page. So if you click on my name, it'll take you to the main page. At the very top, there's some playlists, and one of them is Take 10. You go in there, episodes four and five. Four talks about our energy, like I was kind of touching on a little bit. And then the other one is, it talks about the Six of Pentacles, which is our, this uh, giving and receiving rate of exchange that's in our subconscious running on autopilot. And uh, if those resonate, check those out because they're like ten, less than 10 minutes each, but they give you some good um, some good tools on that. So be sure to check it out. All right. So that's what they have for you at DFS. So many blessings to you. And we'll continue moving down the list here. So we got Lynx Lee is up next. You want to love reading. All right. So you've got the Eight of Cups that's coming in here. And part of the process that they're telling you with this Eight of Cups is you know, they're leaving behind these emotions and relationships that don't serve them anymore. And they're headed off to the Nine of Cups. Nine of Cups is emotional wish fulfillment. Dreams come true. So as far as love, when they're, when you get a card like this, the spirit is basically saying, um, your reservoir of emotional energy is, you know, below, um, that's healthy for you to have a healthy emotional relationship with, with someone. And what it means is that you have a lot of relationships in your world that you're investing so much in and getting so little back where you're the one giving 70, 80, 90%, and they're only giving 10, 20, 30% consistently. You know, relationships are give and take, but these are the ones that you're investing so much in. You're the one that are maintaining it. You're the one that's keeping the relationship going. And it, comes a point where you're like, you know what, we need some of that back of uh, in order for you to have a romantic, intimate relationship with someone. So it's like, okay, well, let me back off to 50% on this one, 50% on this one. If they don't make up the difference and the relationship drifts away, then you get that full extra 50% back too. Um, and there might be some way you're like, no, there's no going back 50% on that. You're right. I, I give 90% all the time and I'm the one that's, it's, it's like a one-sided relationship. Nope, I'm taking it all back. So you're getting all this energy coming back from your emotional, you know, relationships. And that can be friends, family, exes, um, coworkers, anything like that. And you're like, nope, you know, I'm bringing my energy back. And then the other thing is below the surface, you have a lot of charged emotions from your earlier emotional child days, seven years old and younger, that when you were uh, young, you know, we're encouraged to laugh, you know, as children. That's when we express emotion. We're not thinkers yet. We develop our brain like seven years old and, and between seven and 14. Um, so we just know how to respond emotionally to things. Laugh, cry, throw a tantrum in anger. 
those are the three things like the as babies and toddlers and seven years old and younger were taught to do. Or I mean, it's part of us. But what we're taught to do is laughter is okay, but tantrums and crying, stop it. No, go to your room until you stop crying. You know, you better get up or I'll give you something to cry about. You know, <laughs> all those wonderful things that have been passed down from generation to generation. It's been going on for thousands of years. Um, but we um, have these feelings that we wanted to express anger. We wanted to express sorrow and crying and fear. And we weren't allowed to. So we wrap that in emotional energy and stuff them down below. Well, now you are able to and strong where you can bring those up, allow your inner child to express itself, giving it a space to do it. And then that energy comes back to you. So you're filling up this vat of um, emotional energy to prepare for this relationship. So this is what they want to be done first. And that will help them come in. Because once you're filled up, then it's like the green light is on. That's one of the things that needs to be in place for that relationship to come in. All right. Wow. I know it was a lot, but that's what you have, Linksley. <laughs> so many blessings to you. And then angel blessings. You want to know April month for you. What do they want you to know? Wow. It's a great month. You got the will of fortune. So it is abundance. It is the tune of for you. It's the fortune, the will of fortune, right? So it is. Things are unfolding. There's endings and beginnings that bring fruition. You know, the wheels are turning. They're bringing things for you. So it feels very abundant, very full. And even your human is on board because everything truly is for us. But sometimes your human goes, "What? Is, how is that for me again? <laughs> but this, when the wheel of fortune comes up, then even your human's like, I'm on board. This is for me. Bring it on. So uh, April feels very abundant and very full for you. Um, and I just feel like it's in every area of your life. You just have this feeling of building of joy and celebration and abundance in a lot of ways. So I like it for you. All right. Talk about blessings. I like it. All right. And many blessings to you, angel blessings. And then Pinky, you are up next. So how does Leo perceive you? So we've got the high priestess here. So, you know, the high priestess, she is a very emotional being, very, very mysterious and intriguing. And she sees into the unknown and the hidden. And I feel like he he picks up on that. You you shouldn't know that. How do you, or why are you asking me how I feel? You know, I'm smiling and you're like, yeah, there's something going on in there. Uh, and so they see you, you know, a bit witchy. <laughs> That's funny. But, you know, better that than the other word that rhymes with it, right? And, um, but they see you as this emotionally deep moving person, this enlightened person, this know, you have this knowingness, um, around you too. But, um, I feel like, um, a little bit intimidated. You are not intimidating. There's a difference. They're intimidated because I feel like they're like, they're not used to people. It's like being around a mind reader. You don't know how to act. You're like, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if I want this because if you can pick up on my emotions and know what I'm going through, then you know if I'm lying or hiding something. <laughs> Such a Leo, <laughs> a lower vibration Leo, just to all you Leos that are watching. That's lower vibration Leo. <laughs> so um, I feel like that's kind of what they're seeing at here. And, um, and they do see that there's times you know, where you need to back away and connect higher and like you step away from things. They see you as a little bit introverted, maybe, um, you know, because that's what a high priestess does. She's like, all right, chaos. I've had enough of you for a while. I'm going to just step back and recharge, right? So uh, this is the kind of energy that I feel is coming in there for you, Pinky. So many blessings to you. And then smooth life. Um, you wanted a spirit message, message from spirit. All right. Let me just cover up things here. So you got the devil card coming in. Here's Capricorn Saturn energy that's coming in. Something to be aware of. I'm going to do probably a short video or a short, short, you know, hashtag short on YouTube about it. We just today, Saturn, Saturn energy is gone, just began, uh, began its pre-shadow into its retrograde. 
it'll be in pre-shadow until it goes full retrograde on June 29th. But you, as you get closer to June 29th, you're going to feel this intensity, this little shaking of and rattling of your cages of looking into your personality and why do you believe things the way you do and are you living the way you want? Are you, um, you know, having the career you want? Uh, how do you perceive yourself socially and all these things that you're going to be questioning and transforming yourself, which is a positive thing. It's our shadow. And they come in to do that, to release us from the cage that we have ourselves in all these restrictions of, Oh no, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Do that. And you get rewarded, you know, all that praise and punishment that we created this massive cage that we have our heart in and our mind in that we can't escape. But this process that spirit wants you to know about is that you're as these things come up you're going to be able to release them release thoughts that don't serve you anymore release emotions that don't serve you anymore that allow you this freedom in this you're lifting the chain over your head you can even see that with you know let me see if i can do this without oh, maybe this you can see it on him <laughs> see how loose that chain is he can take that chain right over his head and um and, and they can do that. You know, it's like, okay, um, freedom that comes from this. And that's what happens with Saturn energy. It's the workhorse. It's the worker. It's like, we're going to do that shadow work, but there's a reward at the end of it. And it will be so worth it. So that's their message for you is, you know, just know it's happening for you. And it's like taking a pebble out of your shoe that's been bugging you for years and they're like, sit down, take off your shoe, and it's even in your sock. And take off your sock and, <laughs> and dump it out. Here, in fact, here's a new pair of socks. And they're cushy. Here's a new pair of shoes, too. And you're like, wow, this feels great. You know, and this is the kind of energy that's coming in. They're so funny. Mama needs a new pair of shoes. <laughs> so, soul searching vibe. You are up next. So, you wanted guidance from your future self. You got the six of wands, which is this energy of victory, this energy of being seen and standing out. So I like this, you know, your future self is like, keep going. You're on the, you know, the six energy is flowing and they're like, you're in, you're going in the right direction. Not that there's a right or wrong, but you're going in the direction of where we wanted to go. And so, um, you know, just have confidence in that don't question the path i kind of feel like is the the energy there and you are supported too you got this whole group here all those other wands back there are your spiritual posse you're surrounded by a host of beings that are um supporting you watching out for you giving you messages all over the place but they're celebrating you too and um they're just like you should be proud of yourself kind of energy. So I like that. You know, you've been doing the work. You've been going forward. And sometimes <clears throat> if you've ever driven across country and it's a new territory and you're driving and you think you took the right turn to be on a freeway and you keep going, but you see a different highway marker <laughs> and you're like, I wonder if I took a wrong turn. But sometimes there's freeways that have like multiple, like for a period of time, they all merge onto one and it is more than one freeway, but they only, someone put only a, a sign of one of the freeways and you're like, oh, I don't know, maybe I should turn around. I don't know. And you're worrying and all of a sudden you see, you come upon the little one where they have the five highways that are on there and like, oh, there it is okay, I am okay. And this is like one of those things are like, you're okay. You're on the right path. Even though it feels kind of wonky and weird right now, you're on the right path. <laughs> All right. So that's what they have for you. Soul searching vibe. Many blessings to you. All right. And then a new three, you're up. So you wanted spirit message here. Well, here is spirit. Here's your higher self with your human self. The lion is your character. You're playing as the human and the maiden is your higher self. See the infinity symbol on her head. This is, um, your higher self drawing you to this place. And I like this because they're like, you're in this beautiful transformative time in your life where you're realizing like the lion does when they're told, you know, they come down here, they're unaware of their spirit self. They just feel like they're, I'm just a human 
having these experiences and everyone's telling me this empty feeling that I'm feeling inside, you will fill that up out there. There's relationships, there's situations like jobs, education, social status accomplishments, and things. Those things are going to make you feel full. So go eat and drink of those things. And we're like, okay, everyone's taught it. And so we go forward like the lion does and we eat and we drink of it. And we're like, why am I still thirsty? Why am I still hungry? In fact, why am I even more thirsty? Why am I even more hungry? And the more we eat of relationship situations and things, we realize that that's not fulfilling us. That's not full, uh, filling us up. And in fact, the lion gets so desperate because it's so hungry. It's desiring to be filled, you know, in their our hearts. And uh, we're not finding it out there. So it becomes hangry, hungry, angry, where it's roaring in the jungle. And that's when the higher self comes down and makes itself known. And that's when we're like, oh, I'm more than this human. I'm this powerful, supernatural, eternal spirit being. That's the actor behind the character that's going on here. And our higher self doesn't come down to put us out of our misery. You know, we're taught sometimes that light must destroy darkness. We must destroy our ego. But no, our higher self comes down knowing that what our human self is hungering for is the unconditional eternal love of back home from whence we've come. And uh, so it is made, our higher self is a being made of unconditional love so it can come down and give the lion, you know, it's like they're feeding them um, here and it, they're giving them what they've been looking for. And so rather than it being a battle, they complete, our higher self completes our human side. And then we walk together hand in paw because that lion, <laughs> that roaring lion in the jungle transforms into a purring little lion cub sitting in the lap of our higher self. And it feels like I'm never not, uh, I'm never going to have feel needy again because I found everything I need from the higher realm. Then the outside world, we don't stop desiring outside world stuff or wanting, we just stop needing it. And the outside world then, because we're filling up on the inside, it transforms where instead of being a world of lack and falling short, we're filling up on the inside. So anything anyone gives us is above and beyond extra. Then the world becomes a, a place of abundance instead. So I feel like that's the message spirit has for you right now. New sweet. Hopefully that helps. Many blessings to you. Roar. Roar. <laughs> this this uh, eclipse energy got me acting weird. <laughs> Beware. <laughs> All right. So many blessings, in new three. And then cutie, you are up next. Anything from your subconscious mind. All right. Yeah, we've got the seven of swords here, which represents the thoughts and your own thoughts and beliefs and mindsets that are deceptive, that steal opportunities from you. I like the seven of swords the way they have it because you're leaving two swords behind. So it shows that you already are aware of some of those beliefs that you've let go. And then you see they're turned backwards, but they're looking at the three swords in their left hand, and there's two swords in their right. So the three swords in their right hand there, I mean, I'm sorry, in their left hand, those are the ones that you're becoming aware of um, and that you're releasing and transforming. And there's just still a couple more to go. And I like this, that your subconscious mind is just saying, yeah, there's a lot of thoughts and beliefs that are rooted in fear that we're given our entire you know, we're in the womb all the way up until right now, you know, we're influenced and given these beliefs and these fear beliefs and fears are echoed and triggered and all sorts of fun stuff. But I feel like your subconscious mind wants to let you know that, yeah, you know, our, our hands are full in the beginning, but, you know, celebrate the ones that you've been able to release, uh, celebrate the ones that you're aware of and celebrate that you're going to, the other ones are in hand. So you're going to see those when you turn back that direction. But in the meantime, focus on these that are making themselves known. It's like a little kid. Our fears that want to be, you know, beliefs that want to be looked at, they will get our attention. It's like a little kid. Hey, 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 what? <laughs> you know, <laughs> Um I wouldn't yell at a little kid. I'm just kidding. But, you know, this is our child self, so we can yell at ourselves. And they're like, 
whatever. Anyway, uh, here's some stuff I want you to look at, right? And so the triggers that are popping up in your life, though, they're coming into your life to create the triggers so that you can be aware of them. So it's happening for you. And just know that, you know, um, focus on those that are making themselves known, but that doesn't need to be your 100% focus, right? If you focus on all your fears, we grow our fears because what we focus on, we attract and draw and grow. So I usually say 80-20 rule. Spend 80% of your time on connecting to the higher realms, focusing on unconditional love and joy and laughter and peace and gratitude. Then that expands and grows. And spend 20% of our time on those ones that you know make themselves known, going, look at me, look at me. And then once you transform it, back over here, you know. So um, I like that for you. And that's what they have for you right now. So many blessings, cutie. And then Goldie, you are up. So Goldie, you want to know anything about your significant one? No? <laughs> well, you definitely have one here. The Four of Wands is the marriage and the celebration card here. I like the Four of Wands too because it's a balanced energy. It's a balanced attraction. It's an equal attraction. And it's interesting. I They just showed me that on each of those sites, you know, the two wands together makes like a pause. You know, if you ever have like on a uh, a radio or something that's playing, the little pause button is two lines next to each other. Well, I feel like what they're telling you about your significant one is both of you, when you meet, you kind of had this pause that's going on in your life for a reason here. It's like, um, there was just like both of you felt like you were delayed or being held up, but you were so that you would bump into one another. It's like spirit and, and your higher self, of course, were working in cahoots. I like that word, cahoots, and allowed you to bump into one another. That's how you guys meet um, through that. You might even meet at a wedding um, as well. Uh, it's, it's in the, you know, back in my mind, or you might have already met them at a wedding before. I don't think you can know them yet. Um, yeah, because you haven't met each other yet. That pausing, that being held up. So I like that. Um, something about pause too with puppies, uh, if that makes sense. So um I, I just feel like there's gonna be something involved with um canines, like the puppy dogs, whatever that uh, brings in there too. Interesting. But that's what's coming in, Goldie. Like Goldie, like a golden retriever. <laughs> um, so maybe, yeah, maybe it's you made out of vet. Maybe that's the delay. You both are being held up, and that's when you guys start talking. Um, or or dogs get intertwined or something to do with, I feel like there's just canines involved. <laughs> All right. So that's what we have for you, Goldie. So many blessings to you. And then twin flame, divine soul, the person on your mind, their, their higher self's guidance. All right. No. Don't hate them. Temperance. Patience. <laughs> things do unfold. Things, they're just like, be patient. Things are, even though it feels like, why are we just putting this water back and forth? But each time it goes from one cup to the other, there's this magic that's happening. It's becoming a little more closer and closer and closer to gold. So they're like, trust the process, trust the timing. You know, it's it's all happening on purpose for a purpose. And with anything, things go slow so that we can be taking the time to look at ourselves so that we can raise our love vibration, get rid of old thoughts that don't serve us anymore, emotions that don't serve us anymore energy that doesn't serve us anymore, things in our physical world that don't, um, you know, they're not for us anymore. We're just like, I'm not getting anything from this anymore. So uh, it's done its stuff. And so it gives us time to do this spring cleaning from head to toe from all of our energies, mental, emotional, energetic, and physical. And, um, and just know that it's happening on purpose. So take the time you know, we don't just sit around in a waiting room waiting for them to arrive. You know, it's like a baby. If we're waiting for a baby to arrive, oh, no, nope, we're putting the crib together. We're painting the nursery. We're doing this. We're doing that. We don't just sit there going, I think the baby's coming. They're like, well, maybe you should go get it some clothes. 
maybe we should get some diapers. You know, it's like, no, we're all prepared in advance, right? And that's what I feel like you're doing is the preparatory and the timing is giving you that so that it'll be smooth and easy. So I like that for you. So hopefully that makes sense to inflame. That's what they have for you. So many blessings. And then Yanvi Gavandi, 27. You'd like a love reading for you. All right. So you've got the nine of wands coming in here. And you can see that this person has a bandage on their head. Maybe you can. There it goes. So yeah, they have a white bandage on their head. They've been hitting their head up against the wall over and over and over and over again. Trying, you know, doing the same thing, expecting a different result. And I feel like, you know, this barrier that's there has been there on purpose, of course, for a purpose, always so. But it's like, um, <laughs> your spirit guides are funny. Take a hint that that's not the direction to go anymore. If there's been like a, a love in your life that you just been fixated on, they're like, it's time to let that go. And it's time for this fresh start. And with this nine of wands, it is this, even if it's that ideal person in your brain, even, even if it's not a physical person, this person you've been trying to, you know, even if it's this make-believe illusion in your head of this dream person, they're like, let all of this go. And the nine of wands is about stepping back and looking at your energy and looking out, you know, what is it? Why, why do I think I want what I want and what was my heart truly want? And when you take back your power and you realize where you're focusing your energy and what you're wanting to do, um, you know, you start kind of this, instead of focusing on I'm, I'm wanting love, I'm wanting a relationship, I'm missing a relationship, because that energy tells the universe, I enjoy missing things, I enjoy wanting, but not receiving things. And there, this energy with this nine of wands is, taking that and going, you know what, instead, I'm going to say, creator, you know, I want love and I'm giving it to you. I'm trusting you're going to bring the perfect person in the perfect way, in the perfect timing. I'm going to start focusing on gratitude for what is in my life. And a great thing to do too is, which sometimes can be hard, but the relationships you've had in your life, even, even non-romantic, um, it's like, what am I grateful for, for the love that I have in my life? And what am I grateful for, for the, uh, for the relationships I did have? And then when you're having gratitude around relationships and love, that tells the universe, I really enjoy having relationships. And if it's romantic, romantic relationships that have these lovely things that, and then the universe goes, oh, good, I'll give you some of that, right? Instead of, more missingness, more wantingness, right? So I like that for you because as soon as you recognize that, you take a hold of your ace of sword, ace of one, sorry, and uh, what was behind here, which was blocking you before, is now open. It lets you slide right through, and uh, look at there's progress. <laughs> All right, so that's what they have for you, Yambi. So many blessings to you, and then Minahil, you are up. Hi. So what do you need to know about your future spouse? All right. So the page of wands, uh, you know, they are a very, well, fire signy energy. So, you know, you need to know that about them. The other thing is that, okay, we'll talk about this other thing first. They told me two things and what I'm like, how am I going to say that? But we'll figure, they'll tell me here in a sec. But let's focus in on the fire sign. He has a child likeness that they're very about possibilities. And I don't feel like they're very organized. They're more of a, they keep their lists up here and they fly by the seat of their pants and some things. It's fire energy. It's very adventurous, but they like to travel and go do things too. So you kind of have to take that with all of it. And you're like, hey, I know you don't like planning stuff. So let me plan the plane and the hotel and all that. I just need your credit card. <laughs> yeah. Now, so they have just, no, they have this child likeness that may or may not resonate with you. You might be like, I need you to be a little more responsible. You're not going to be able to, you need to know that about them right now that you just need to get used to the idea of I'm going to let them be them. And the things that I feel need to be done, I'm going to do them. If I want them done, I'm not going to put it on them and try to change them, right? 
The other thing is with all this fire energy, they're very, very passionate. That's what you're going to recognize first. You may want emotion. You may want, you know, mental stimulation and all this other stuff, but they're going to be very expressive of their physical and energetic attraction, which is good. We want that too, of course, but uh, it's like <laughs> your spirit or, or their higher self wants you to know, just know that we'll get past that. You know, there, there is emotion and there's all that that comes with it, but that's, what's going to be like glaring in the beginning. And then you're like, okay, oh my gosh, what are you a teenager? <laughs> all right. I think you get what I'm saying. All right. So that's what they have for you right now. Many heal. <laughs> so many blessings to you. All right. And then, Shanae Govender, you are up. So how did R feel towards your story? Wow. Nine of Cups is joy, joy overflowing here. You know, it's like dreams and wishes come true. It's like they really enjoyed the story. So there's a lot of happiness and contentment. And I feel like, you know, I mean, they're they're there with that silly grin on their face. So they liked it. Uh, very positive <laughs> card to get to get for that so very emotionally moved by it if that makes sense so um it just feels like um like wishes fulfilled that's all i can that's all that's coming through so hopefully that makes sense to you to you shanae so uh, many blessings to you and then uh Zhu, seven 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 you are up you wanted angel guidance all right so you got the six of swords coming in and this is yes. It's like a yes. If you're asking them like, should I, or shouldn't I, this is yes. This is progression. This is movement. Just you, you'll need to leave some ways of thinking, some fears, some old ways of thinking behind to be able to move forward. And it is a great, it takes you from choppy waters to calmer waters. It might even take you over waters if that resonates because that comes with this card too of overseas travel or over lake, over water travel, maybe go over a river, who knows. <laughs> but there's this, you know, movement, movement, movement of thought and belief and mindset that rolls out into the outside world. So, you know, it is a yes, change your attitude about some things, see it from a different perspective, let some things go, see things from a higher perspective that allows you to move forward. And it is a, a good smooth movement card. Think of a six of swords, three on each side. There's this beautiful flow and movement of thought and belief that comes with that. So um, I like it. Um, hopefully that resonates for you and gives you what you need today on that. So many blessings to you. All right. And then we've got on you, Priya. Anything you need to know about your love life? All right. Yeah, um, this is a great card to get. You're like, no, but this is a great, you know, this is the three of swords, the expectations equal disappointment, the um, experience of heartbreak. But the big message that comes with it is that our heart cannot be broken. What? I know. Who knew? <laughs> but the three of swords is this energy of, you know, awareness. Our heart is so strong, it can never be broken, right? Our high heart, our true heart. It's eternal, it's powerful, it's supernatural, it's so expansive. Uh, it can't be broken. But we come down here into this human existence, to this giant amusement park full of fear rides to ride those fear rides and to experience what heartbreak might feel like. We never, ex we never really truly happen, but we feel something. And then what we feel is when we go into fear. So if you ever look at being startled by someone, like a cat jumping out of nowhere, or someone jumping out to scare you, boo, you know, you're like, ah! and you have that prick in your heart, that's heartbreak. That's the feeling. It's us going into fight or flight mode. Like, oh my God, I gotta, you know, it's our heart igniting and putting adrenaline and getting ready to fight or to flee like that. Well, when you realize it's the cat or your brother or whoever's scaring you, then it just, you calm down and it clears and the pain stops, right? But the thing with emotional, being emotionally startled, <laughs> it's when someone does something and we have a belief story about it inside that, 
Oh, when that person does that, that means I'm unlovable. <gasps> no. And because the, the, the uh, belief is not resolved immediately, because it's bubbling down there below the surface, we're just looping in fight or flight mode. We have that heartbreak, heartbreak, heartbreak. It's heart scare, heart scare, heart scare. It's, you know, our heart is getting scared over and over again, startled, 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 until we look into that and we do with that. So, um, you know, um, but it's like, wow, okay, we've, we've got that, you know, um, awareness that comes in with it. And we become aware that that feeling is just fear, not heartbreak it doesn't mean anything about me we're able to learn to take deep breaths and come out of fear or eventually we're distracted and we come out of fear and we can take that time to think about what am i fearing does that really mean anything about me when someone is unfaithful in a relationship that you know not living up to what we agreed we would is that about me is that i'm unworthy to you know be um loyal to no this is about them not about me but my fears are for about me, but their actions are about them, you know, and we have this freedom that comes. And then uh, when that thing happens again, we might be a little scared, but we're like, oh, that's that fear. Okay. What am I afraid of? You know, and we can change that habit. So I love this that because it allows you to see relationships completely different that no one can break my heart. I, that's my job. I can only break my own heart or pretend like my heart is broken because my emotional choices are my own. If I uh, remain in that heartbreak, that's me doing that, not anyone else. No one makes me feel any way. People do things, say things, or don't say things, or don't do things. I create the story. I choose the emotions. I choose the energy. I choose my physical actions. So there's this freedom that comes with that. So hopefully that helps her <laughs> on Priya. There will be a test later. So um, <laughs> you can watch this as many times as you want. Study it well. I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right. Many blessings to you. <laughs> I'm in a giddy, funny mood. So you guys have to put up with me. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. So Nindi, Nindi Sarvaya. Hello, hello. You want to know what the universe wants you to do in order to focus on your studies and career? All right. I got the Ace of Cups. So this is all about um, turning to you. The Ace of Cups is your, your self-love. Turn inward and upward and um, fill you, allow yourself to be filled from above. That allows you to look at the world differently because if you are in fear, you know, if, if, if it's your mind and other people's dreams or, you know, you feel like I'm supposed to do this studies in this career and I've got to do this. I got to do this. And if I don't do this, this means I'm unlovable and, um, you know, a failure and people are going to hate me and I'm going to get rejected. All those delicious fears that our, that our mind, you know, has developed in rules, um, rules our life over, right? It just feels like a long list of stuff we have to have to do that are rooted in fear. And when we are in fear, we can't focus because when we go into fear, our inner child boots out our intelligent, loving, um, compassionate side of us. And a little two-year-old and its pet hissing cat are in charge. They don't study. They don't test well. <laughs> so when we're in that frame of mind, we're emotionally confused and we're mentally confused. So coming out of fear and stepping and how we do that is we connect more to higher love, unconditional love, it allows us to realize those, those uh, rules about condition, the fear of losing a conditional love doesn't, it takes less um, energy of ours, it uh, takes less of our attention when we're realizing I have everything I need inside of me, then I can be calm. I can be in this beautiful place, which means I have access to my brilliant brain, which means I can study and it's all retained in, in my subconscious and in my brain and I have access to it and I can ask spirit for access to it. But if I'm in fear, <laughs> it's shut off. There, it's, uh, you know, it's not saving anything, right? So I feel like, um, you know, focusing on inner self-love is 
the answer to every question in our life, really, because everything else is in the outside world is a pursuit to try to fill up our ace of cups, our heart. But nothing can fill it up except for the eternal, unconditional love from above. That fills us up and overflows like that. Then everything in the outside world becomes, instead of lacking and falling short and full of fear, it becomes something that is full of life and abundance and we're calm and we're like, you know what? I can take this test. I can do these studies. I can go and do what I want. Um, I get to live my life. I stop trying to worry about, oh, I got to make my parents happy and society happy and my friends happy and my siblings happy. And if I've espoused them happy and blah, 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 a lot, a lot of pressure. When you can give someone the world, they can still choose to be unhappy and still reject us. And you realize, yeah, what am I worried about? You know, one of the big things that I realized, and I think I was like 19, 20 years old. It's the first time I I was worked in like a big, um, uh, it's actually I worked for Dillard's in their buying, uh, buying office in San Antonio. And they had like um, all these cubicles and uh, a lot of people in there, like a hundred people in this, this area, right? So we all saw each other all the time. I went on vacation, came back after probably 10 days, right? And I didn't shave or anything. And I didn't I didn't grow a ton of facial hair um, at that age anyway, but I had grown I had grown a goatee, what looked like a goatee. <laughs> and you would think that I, you know, broke a law or something. Everyone was like, oh my God, what is that? Shave that off. You look better clean shaven. So someone liked me clean shaven. The other person was like, oh, that's all right, but you should grow a full beard, right? Other people, no, no, you should just have a mustache. No, no, no. You should just have those long sideburns. Everyone had all these different ideas. And I'm like, I can't please all those because I'm unless I get some of that, like, you know, fake hair that they use in, in movies and stuff and tape it on and take it off and take it on and take it off, depending on who I'm seeing, I'd go insane. And I realized, you know what? I can only make one of those people happy. The other three or four or five are going to be unhappy. So I'm just going to choose to make myself happy and choose for me. So I feel like they're uh, nudging you to look at with all of that. But it starts with self-love, if that makes sense. All right, Needy, that's what they have for you, my dear. So many blessings to you. All right, and then Starfall. Hey, hey, you want to know what is coming in next for love? All right. You have the Seven of Cups, so this is a lot of emotional energy coming in. Some emotional confusion in a way, but I feel like it's a good emotional confusion because I feel like with love, you're going to be having different people that are coming across your path that you have attraction toward. And I feel like it's this learning and getting to know people and you're just like, okay, well, I like that about them, but I'm not sure about the rest of that. And that's, I feel like you're going, you know, it's like Frankenstein. You're choosing all the things that you like about all these individuals. <laughs> Don't worry, you're not, you're not going to kill them and make a, a Frankenstein monster. This is, you're creating this gratitude. And, you know, you, as you meet these individuals, you just want to, um, you can even verbalize it to the person. You know what I really love about you sincerely is da 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 da. And then you tell the universe, you know, I'm really grateful that for people that have that. And it's like because of the gratitude, the universe says, oh, well, I'll bring more people that have that. And especially if you're like, well, I, I like people with that and that and that and that. And that. I really am grateful that there's people with those characteristics sincerely. And then the spirit goes, okay, here's someone with all of it. And you're like, oh, there they are, you know. Um, so it's interesting. Uh, I've never had that ever before, but I love that. Uh, Frankenstein's monster. We'll call it Starfall's monster. But monster, I don't know if we want monster, but you know what I'm saying. So I like that. I like that for you. And that's what's coming is, so it's starting with you focusing on gratitude that you, what you have loved and relationships of the past and in people that you're meeting as well. So interesting. I like it. All right. That's what they have for you right now. Star falls. So many blessings to you. And then Nat, Nat, you are up. So a general reading. All right. Well, now is the time for manifestation. 
with a magician card. This is you, your higher self, being the conduit, bringing down this energy from above and bringing it down into the earth. You're this conduit of energy. You're this, I don't know, it's just like um, Spirit is saying, it's time for you to really decide what you want to focus on, what you want to grow. You are more powerful than you realize. And um, you're not in the back seat in a baby in a baby seat um, with creator driving and your posse as your passengers and you're along for the ride going, where are we going next? You know, no, you're the one in the driver's seat. What? I know. And creator is your co-pilot. They're going to, they put the addresses in the nav system and they handle the climate control and the radio and handing out the snacks and uh, and then you're driving a bus, actually, because your whole posse is in the back seat. And they're along for the ride. They're like, um, reminds me of like when my host takes her her dog for an R-I-D-E. That's how you have to say it otherwise. Right? <laughs> so excited. They don't care where we're going. They're just like, yeah, I'm in. I'm all in. And that's how our spiritual posse is. And But you have the power and there's no wrong choice. They're like, where do you want to go? I don't know. Where am I supposed to go? Wherever you want to go, we're totally supportive. There's never any wrong choice. There's just different choices with different experiences. And so I like this energy coming in here for you because it's like you get to choose. You get to go where you want to go. And it's all supportive, but it's how it's determined is where you invest your energy. It's like that magic wand. Wherever you focus your magic wand energy Whatever you focus on is what we're telling the creator to put in the nav system. That's where the car is taking us, right? So if we're focusing on what we fear, we're going headed towards our fears. If we're focusing on what we hate, we're headed towards what we hate. If we're focusing on what we're missing, we're going to loop around and experience missing more. If I'm focusing on wanting, then we're going to also loop on the wanting highway that loops. Because uh, wanting means never receiving. Um, and so there's all this energy, but if you focus on your energy going, you know what? I like gratitude. I like joy. I like laughter. I like peace. You know, um, then when we're having that gratitude, then we head towards things that we love instead. So hopefully that makes sense, but that's, what's coming in for you, Nat Nat. So many blessings to you. All right. And then great courts. What's your future in your career? All right. Well, I feel like with the Tower card, you're going to have a sudden change of career. And and I don't feel like this is, um, well, let me back up. I was going to say, I don't feel like it's, I feel, I feel like you're initiating the change of career, but I feel like the initiation of you initiating the career does happen where either something ha is going to happen with the, the job that you're in, the career that you're in, or something where it's like, um, we're going to close that office or we have to cut back hours or we're going to have to have you do twice as much work. That's probably more likely. <laughs> and you're like, uh, is my pay being in? No. And there were no raises this year either. We're like, okay, I think I'm going to need a change of career. <laughs> and then you initiate changing careers and going into a different direction. Something that's more fulfilling, more full that makes your heart sing and makes your heart feel full. Um, and I like that. And I mentioned earlier, if you, um, I know I don't expect everyone to be listening through the entire video. So if I repeat, you know, it's because I am, am uh, thinking that you're only listening to yours. <laughs> but here's this Discover Your Dharma, Discovering Your Life Purpose by Sahara Rose. Uh, great book on helping you find your dharma, your life purpose and direction. If you're unsure, sometimes we'll just be doing what we think our mind is saying that we're supposed to, should, need to, have to, must. But if you want to find like what will make your heart sing, it helps. Uh, her website, I am SaharaRose.com. There's a couple of things on there. Uh, there's a lot of information under the purpose tab. There's a quiz for your Dharma archetype. That's what it is. The email has two that it comes in kind of there's like nine different archetypes and it talks about the top two based on it's like six questions so it's very fast but it's so accurate i was like blown away 
Uh, and then also on the Ayurveda, I think uh, I'd probably be totally mispronouncing that. On that tab, there's a dosha energy quiz or something like that, which tells you your energy. So check it out. And then if you're interested and you, uh, I, I highly recommend the book. It's it's uh, a great book. So I'm not affiliated at all with it at all. Just I'm a fan of hers, uh, of the book especially too. So um, So you can get some guidance there as well. But I feel like this is what happens. It's like, something changes like that where you're like all right that's it i'm i'm done with this I, i'm going to pursue this i've always wanted to do this what's stopping me that was stopping me before contentment in the job and there's suddenly the eh, what do they call it was the age of discontent whatever and <laughs> it's discontent and so you're you're ready to go in a different direction so that's what's coming in for you almighty great courts uh and many blessings to you all right, and then Amber, you are up. So um, is there someone around you that has ill intentions in hiding things? If so, who? <clears throat> no, I don't think so. I think that someone's attracted to you. There is someone that has <laughs> uh, physical and energetic attraction to you. And I feel like they're going to make yourself known here. Um, so I don't feel like there's uh, any ill intentions that that is coming in um you can ask yourself why do i feel like someone has ill intentions towards me and is why do i feel people would hide things from me and you can kind of turn that around right uh and there's a great reflection that comes in with these things because you can ask yourself um how do i have ill intentions towards myself just sit with it it's it's like um you know just reflection going how do i have ill intentions toward myself like me i'm like well i um eat too much sugar at times <laughs> and i'm like that's an ill intention it's like if i love if my body goes if you loved me you would um not try to kill me <laughs> um you can also ask what are you hiding from yourself right if I feel that people are hiding things, oh, what am I hiding from myself? Mm. So I like that um, type of energy coming in there. But I don't feel like there's a specific person that spirits want you to know about besides that someone has a crush on you and they're attracted to you. <laughs> Maybe that's your spidey sense going, uh-oh, wait a minute. <laughs> you know, it's not someone wanting to do something bad. They're just like, oh, my gosh. And they're just, uh, they're not, they haven't built up the courage to tell you yet. <laughs> All right, so that's what's coming in for you, Amber. So many blessings to you. All right. And then up next, we've got balance and bliss. Hey, so what's your husband have to say about VJ? Any messages for you and your daughter? Uh, all right. Um, so you know, I'm gonna just pull one card. I do one uh, you know, free one free reading. I'm so I'm just gonna see what spirit wants to answer among all that here, right? <clears throat> Which it can be double, these this can apply to both with the five of swords. Because the five of swords is about conflict, mental conflict, communication conflict here. And, you know, for you and your daughter um, from your husband's soul, you know, they're, the message for you guys is like, get out of your head and into your heart. No fears, no supposed to's, no shoulds, no need to's, no have to's. Because, you know, from the other side, they see like how our humanity, we're so trapped by our thoughts and, you know, fears of failure, fears of rejection, all these fears, these small T truths that we're caught all our lives. If we can get into our heart, that's where we get to live and love and we see the world in a completely different way. And I feel like he's telling you that you know, with the, um, you know, with the, uh, for you and your daughter, don't get out of your head. Um, you know, this is logical. This seems like a supposed to, we should do that. We need to do that. We have to do that. No. What does your heart want to do? And let your heart have a seat at the table, uh, regarding that, um, regarding what they have to say about, uh, the Vijay, Vijay, um, you know, with the five of swords here, um, you know, <clears throat> they're so funny. They're like, I'm conflicted because they, what your husband has to say is that 
Um, people say they change and it's important for them to prove it to you. All right. So, you know, they're all about you falling in love again. They're all about you following your heart and enjoying life. But since you're asking them, <laughs> that's funny. But since you're asking me, you know, they're saying, you know, I would um, date for a long time, make them show you who they are now, not just this is who I am. No, show me who you are. Don't tell me who you are. All right. And that's what I feel is coming in with all of that. <laughs> so um, not not that there's, uh, you know, big concerns, but they're just like, just to see if that's who you want to be with and, and take your time. Um, yeah. Okay. That's what they have. <laughs> all right. So many blessings to you. And then tortoise love. Hello. Uh, you want to know whatever message that is important for you. All right. Look at you. You got the Ace of Swords here. The Ace of Swords is a many things, but I feel like what's coming in here, I immediately heard higher education, more, more learning, growth. If you're wanting to learn something new, go to school, um, whatever, it's very, very supportive for you. Um, because I feel like if if it's part of you living your dream, they're like, what are you holding back for? Um, you don't need to hold back. Uh, you're very supported by them. Um, you've got the brilliance. You've got the, you know, beautiful mind. Um, and they, they're they just like this support. Like, you got it. You have this gift of intelligence and um, and don't waste it. You know, they're like, don't hold back. Don't, don't let fear hold you back. And, um, you know, what do you want to do with your life? Who do you want to be? Don't let it stop. If you want to be a brain surgeon, go for it. You know, um, no matter what anyone has told you or tells you, you are going to be who you want to be. And and they're like, just go forward and do it here with this Ace of Swords. Don't don't let anything hold you back. Pursue it. Pursue it. it whatever it's training, certification, whatever this learning is that you need to do to move forward towards this dream. Uh, they're all behind you 100%. <laughs> all right. So that's what they have for you right now. Tortoise love. So many blessings to you. All right. And then you, Uzabanes, uh, you are up next. You can want to say USA Banes because <laughs> United States of America. Uh, but you'd like a reading. So let's take a look here. Yeah, you have the Eight of Swords, which I like this. This is like this reflection that you're having in your life right now where you're really, really learning and releasing a lot of old thoughts and beliefs and mindsets that have in the past made you feel blinded and bound and trapped and restricted. But this aid of uh, swords is you questioning these things and moving beyond them and releasing yourself uh, from them and realizing, okay, these aren't true. These are rooted in fear. These are things that opinion I was told, but now you're in this time of questioning, especially during the Saturn retrograde that were uh, just entered the pre-shadow It'll go retrograde on June 29th, and then I think June 29th, yeah, uh, and then it goes direct on November 15th, and then it will be in its post shadow until February 18th. So you got this period of time of a lot of reflection where you're releasing things, releasing fears, getting clarity around your life about what you want, what you don't want, why you have restricted yourself in the past, and. Um, the uh, you're replacing those untruths with higher truths rooted in unconditional love from above, not small t truths. So I like this freedom that's coming in here. A lot of questioning. Why do I believe that? Why do I think that way? Why is that triggering? What's going on here? Just a lot of um, understanding of these these thoughts and beliefs. So I like that for you. Hopefully that helps. And um, in if you see this reading in the next one, if you have a, a specific question. Uh, you don't have to ask if you can have a reading. You can just say, here's what I'd like to know. <laughs> so I uh, appreciate the politeness, but, you know, I'm, I'm used to just people just saying, hey, I need a love reading. Hey, I need this. Hey, I need that. Uh, I can feel everyone's appreciation because I'm an empath, so I don't have to hear it. <laughs> it's nice sometimes, though, but you don't have to hear it. <laughs> All right. So many blessings to you. All right. And then Swaroop, Bobby, you are up next. And you wanted to know, any new love coming in for you? 
Not for a little bit. You got the nine of pentacles here, which the nine is the hermit's journey. The pentacles is the outside world. So the nine of pentacles is like you being alone by yourself with spirit. That's who the, the hawk is on her, her hand there. And um, just there's this time here of, and you can even see, let me see if I can get it close enough. You can see a snail. They're in the very bottom of the card. And that's the slowness that it happens in here. It's like there's this slowness, this um, growth period to allow you to raise your love vibration, to, to look at your worth in relationship to the outside world in a different way, which is you're raising your self-worth, you're raising your self-love, you're raising your love vibration because you don't want to do what you've always did and get what you've always gotten. You want to do things at a higher higher vibration to draw in a higher vibration type of relationship. And that's what they're teaching you and what you're going through here. And the more time you spend in looking at that and doing that, the faster things move forward. If you're wanting some guidance on those, if you check out my podcast from Chaos to Cozy, it talks about how we move from lower vibration chaos and things that spirit has helped me over time to move from the very darkest time in my life to where I am now. It's going to be a journey for a while, sharing all this information. Um, there's a lot of helpful stuff in there if you want to check those out. All right. And the link is in the description box of the video here, or you can find it on my main page as well. All right. So, Roop, that's what they have for you regarding love right now. So, hang in there. Many blessings to you. All right. And then, Jeep, you are up. So, you want to know, you're going to invest a relative big amount of money on a specific stock will be profitable, right? Disclaimer, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not a psychologist, a medical professional. So, you know, there's a disclaimer in the description box of the video, uh, you know, tarot's for entertainment purposes only. Uh, I should not replace seeking professional assistance. And ultimately, everyone makes their own decisions. That said, now we'll pull a card. <laughs> It looks like it'll do well. You have the Ten of Cups, which is joy and celebration here. So, you know, by that card, it feels like, yeah, it brings a lot of joy to you. Um, but definitely, if it's a large, large amount of money, it wouldn't hurt getting financial advice from a professional. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so there you go, Jeep. Many blessings. And then Ashvin Rai, you're up. Divine guidance on your current situation. You know, it's all about the balance, balance, balance. And, you know, the choices to be made in the outside world. There's, you know, a choice to be made in the outside world that seems right with the mind. And then there's one that the heart wants to do. And I say go with your heart. Because, um, you know, the mind is rooted in fear and supposed to's and shoulds and need to's. And the heart says, you know, um, I'd rather have tried and failed than not tried and never known or something like that. You know, it's like, I'd rather have tried and known and failed than to not have tried and never have known something like that. But it's like, you're always going to wonder if you don't, if that makes sense. And that's what I feel is coming in here with this particular two of pentacles for you is, you know, it's, what are we afraid of? What's holding us back? You know, are we afraid of the rough seas behind there? You know, way back here, behind the scenes here. It's like, I'm afraid of the, the waves. It's like, it's okay. You can turn into a fish, you know. Are you a Pisces? And you can just dive into the water. <laughs> You're the fish of the Zodiac. But not to, not to um, spend too much mental energy. It's like, in this particular situation, follow your heart. And, um, and, uh don't be afraid. And if you have fears, look at him and go, why am I afraid? Really get to the root of it. All right. So that's what's coming in, Ashvin. So many blessings to you. All right. And then God's daughter, you're up here. So let me take a look here. I've got a couple things. Let me just read this here. So there's a company where they sell a lot of houses that you, um, that you like in that company. Is there a family member of Andre that works there? 
that's the work of the company because you saw a guy that works there and has the same last name as uh, Andre. And you also saw another picture of him with Andre's dad, but you're not sure if it's a family member because anyone can have the same last name, right? Oh, that's true. <laughs> that is true. So you want to know if they're a family member. Okay. So <clears throat> that's what we have here. We got the Knight of Pentacles coming in here. And the Knight of Pentacles, it's very earthy energy. And, and it's interesting. I see family tree. <laughs> in fact, that's funny. Um, on his helmet, there's a tree attached to his head. It's like a little, I think it's supposed to be something else. But there's, even on the horse's ears, there's like a little little tree stuff there and growth. So I do feel like they're part of the family tree. So I do feel like they are related. Probably, you know, it can be like cousins, you know, because especially males coming from the family will carry the the surname down there. So I feel like cousin kind of feels like cousin uncle kind of relationship um, type of uh, energy coming in there. So, um, and it with being a knight, uncle probably, um, because pages are younger, knights are like middle, middle, middle age ish, or you know, young adult. So, I like that. I, I feel like that uh, does tell me because I immediately heard family tree. So, um, I believe that is a yes for you, God's daughter. <laughs> All right, so many blessings to you. And then Tavi T, you are up. And you want to know, uh, what do we see the outcome being between you, um, Envy, and the third party you found out about? Okay. Let's take a look here based on current outcomes. So we've got the Queen of Swords coming in here. And the Queen of Swords balances between the head and the heart here. And what I feel here, the outcome that's coming in here, I feel like this is you. And the Queen of Swords, I mean, she rolls over the mind with the uh, King of uh, Swords. But all the queens are given a second portion of emotion. And so they bring both the head and the heart together. I feel like when the head clears, the head and the your head and your heart get together in a very balanced way. And I feel like the outcome is... Um, initiated by you. I feel like you take charge. I kind of feel like in this case, it's almost like you're over the court and you're, you know, with her doing this, it's passing, uh, making a decision and passing, I want to say judgment, that sounds too harsh, but it's like, you're like, you're making a determination. You know what? Um, especially if this is someone that you're with and there's a third party, you're like, you will never trust them again. You know, and when and you have to look at it going, you know what? If they've done it once, they probably have done it before, and they'll probably do it again unless they make a significant change in their life. I had someone who cheated on me. I had several people who cheated on me, but my in my first relationship they did, and um, it was even like six months in, you know, and for two and a half years, I tried and tried and tried and tried to trust. And they finally, this was before, this is a long time ago, before cell phones, when pagers were just new coming up. And usually it was businessmen and drug dealers are, who had them, not just anyone. <laughs> and they asked me, what would I need to do for you to trust me? Well, you'd have to carry a pager around. And anytime I'd call, you'd have to call back immediately. And I'd have a private investigator following you all the time. It was really ridiculous, but I'm like, really, that's, for me to trust you again, that's what would be needed. And I knew at that point it was over because I was like, I never could trust him again. And I feel like that's what you come to conclusion here is this isn't about me. You know, their actions aren't about me. Their actions are about them and, you know, whatever's happening. And it's like, I get to choose for me. I get to decide what this story means about me. And I'm going to choose a different story and I'm going to choose for me rather than, you know, say, what will people think? And I'm like, well, people will think that person's a jerk for <laughs> fooling around on us, right? It's like your your true friends are going to be like, do you need help burying the body? And I'm like, no, 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 we're going to let them live with this. <laughs> um, <laughs> and um, 
Yeah, I've, I have forgiven everyone, uh, you know, since then, of course. But, um, you know, but the, they're like, they support you, that your true friends support and love you. And they won't, you know, uh, and if anyone judges you in any way without knowing the whole situation, who cares what their opinion is because they're making rash opinion judgments without all the information. It's a poor opinion. It's a unfounded one. Why do I want to care what you think? You make poor decisions. <laughs> but hopefully that helps there, uh, Tavi. So hang in there. And uh, I like this. When, you, when your head clears and your heart calms down, you can make a decision going, I'm going to choose for me. And I don't need to fear the outcomes. You know, I just, I feel like that's what uh, was important for you to know. All right. So many blessings to you. All right. And Alice, you want to know, tell you about yourself and who you are meant to be. So there is no meant to be's. There's just a bunch of different choices and options. That's what's great. You know, a human, the human side of us wants to, I, I need to have a, something that has to be fulfilled. I have to know that I'm doing right because I can't be wrong. And the spirit's like, there's no right or wrong. When I go, who should I be? They're like, who do you want to be? You know, we're the ones that are in charge of our journey and our adventure. They're all the creator and all our posse are the, the safari, you know, the guides and the, you know, the carrying all the stuff on our safari. Um, and they're like, where do you want to go? And I'm like, I want to go to that mountain. They're like, all right, we're going to that mountain. There's like no wrong choice because we're just going on this adventure together. Um, you know, <laughs> What they want you to know about yourself, though, is the four pentacles, which is this feeling of um, home. You know, the four pentacles, it's four walls in the outside world. And I feel like need, needing to know that home is where your heart is. It's not a physical location in the outside world that you can be at home with yourself and, and then everything else is fine. Everything else is extra. Everything else is an adventure. Being content with who you are in this moment, knowing you have everything you need inside you is what, you know, uh, makes you realize a lot about life. Four Pentacles has this story where this individual, they went out into the world to try to fulfill, you know, their self-worth because they were told, there's these three coins out here that you go and visit, these three places, and they will um, uh, they will define your self-worth, right? And it's relationships, situations, and things. And each one of those is unstable in the outside world. And so when they went to those things and defined themselves by it, they felt unstable. You know, relationships, people change, people pass away, people walk away. Relationships with humans, never stable. Uh, situations like jobs, education, social status, accomplishments, whatever, they're ever-changing. They never stay the same. Unstable. And then things, our bank accounts, our possessions, our bodies, they deteriorate. They blow up. They burn down. They um, are stolen, right? And... Um, so they're unstable too. So all those things are unstable to where eventually we get grow tired of the instability of the outside world. We turn inward and upward to find the only stable thing in this in this realm, which is the eternal. That's pretty stable. Eternal never stops. Uh, unconditional, no conditions, can't lose it. Uh, love, the eternal unconditional love of the higher realms. And you, dis you discover that Self-worth comes from self, inward and upward, capital S, self. And what when, we look, when we're looking to the outside world to define us, that's called retail price. What's my worth to others? The thing about that is we end up on the clearance rack <laughs> because things are always changing. Things get, people get tired of things. They put things out on clearance and that's what happens. So I like this, you know, when you realize about yourself that you are, you have everything you need right here inside yourself, everything on the outside world, the validation we seek, the self-worth we seek from all those things, retail price. You know, it's like you can be a parka coat, big warm parka coat, northern Alaska in winter. 
people are going to like, oh my God, we, we need you. We want you. We want you. You're that same parka coat, even during summer up there in Alaska um, or on a tropical island on the equator during summer, you end up on the clearance rack. They don't need you anymore. And they, they're like, we don't need that. So it depends on the season, the person, the people's taste, everything. That's the fickleness of the outside world. And when we look to it to validate us, that's why we feel unstable. So I feel like it's an important thing for you to know right now. That's what they want you to know, Alice. So many blessings. <laughs> All right. Let's see how many more we got here. I think I've got about a handful. Let me just stretch these out now that I'm down to, I think, one, two, three, four. Yep. So I'm down to five. So hang in there, guys. <laughs> and after I'm done, I will put a list uh, of, of how the readings were completed, too. So Denise Kodekas, is that how you say that? Kodekas? Um, many blessings to you. And actually, you were just saying greetings from the Pacific Northwest. Blessings to you. So I don't think you asked for a reading. <laughs> so howdy, howdy to you. Well, that, one's, that one's fast. <laughs> Welcome. Right. So there, there was no reading request there. All right. <clears throat> so Angel Dreamer, you are up. So advice from your spirit guides on what they want to tell you that you don't already know. All right. So um, with the Two of Swords, what you don't already know is that you're going to be having an important choice that comes up here in the outside world. And the um, the two choices that you have that are coming up, one is going to look really good on paper and the mind's going to go, yeah, 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 that's it. Obviously, that's it. Mm -mm. That's what you don't know is that there's a lot of hidden stuff. You know, they're bl you're blinded to some things um, with that. There's a lot below the surface that isn't being shared. The other option, your heart is like, yes, yes, yes. Your heart and your gut is urging you to go this other direction. But you're like, but that. And they're like, yeah, but. And you're like, yeah, but, but, but. And they're like, yeah, but, but, but. <laughs> and you're wanting so badly to choose this one that the mind is saying it looks perfect and it's great because it kind of relieves some fears because you fear making a wrong choice, right? But your heart and spirit, everyone's nudging you to go this other route. Follow that one and do that. Because there's a lot of unknown that you don't know about this other thing that they haven't shared, whatever this may be. And so just go, mm-hmm, okay. Follow the gut. All right. So that's what they have for you, angel dreamers. So many blessings to you. And then Bumika, you are up. So question Yasha's feelings for you and upcoming actions for your relationship. All right. Well, right now, you know, the feelings, there seems to be some energetic struggle here, which is like they've got some fears that are have been ignited, some conflict that's going on either with them or with people around about you and your relationship. And um, but the thing about the five is it is transformation and change. So, you know, they'll, they just have to get past this, you know, fears and this drama that's happening between them and whoever this is. And it does make its circle and it switches around and it transforms into something more loving and something more kind. And so I feel like they, you know, things do change. Things do, you know, um, transform there. Um, and then I just feel like they, I don't know, I just feel like there's still some transformation that needs to happen here. They have a variety of different ways, you know, of possibilities of how far they go and what they do to determine their next actions. There's, um, there's too many for them to say, like, well, it depends. If they choose this, this, or this, or this. They haven't made some choices yet, which will change different things. So um, I can't tell you that yet, but just know that their current feelings, they've got this passion, they've got this, you know, conflict that's going on though with within themselves out of fears, um, but that's also, I feel like, spawned some 
conflict in the outer world too, like maybe with family drama, family drama or something like along, along those lines. So if that makes sense, that's what they have for you, Bumika. So many blessings to you. And then HTTPS. Thank you again for all your donations that you made. And then you wanted your free reading, which you'd like to ask. Oh, messages from your spirit team. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, you've been getting all this new opportunities that are coming forward here in the outside world, right? I like the green is standing out. And again, I feel like there's this connecting with uh, your heart chakra. And this uh, page of pentacles is like this. This um, It's definitely an upgrade. We already know that's coming, right? But this is like a, a change in the way you look at your worth, too, in relationship to the outside world relationship to spirit your relationship you know um to the galaxy <laughs> you know it just feels like there's this change of the way you're looking at things and that's what happens there's this um and i feel like like you have this inner change that spawns this new opportunity but the new opportunity is so big that it actually also helps you there if you're a Harry Potter fan, I obviously I think it's the second time I mentioned Harry Potter today, <laughs> but um, Spirit they they use uh, movies and stories that are in my head. They just like tap a memory, and I'm like, oh yeah. So um, there's a time when um, it's when Hermione had the little uh, thing with time, and they went back in time to be able to change something and, and rescue his um, godfather. And um, earlier, there was someone that had used the Patron Patronus charm, I think, whatever, to create this stag that helped save them. He thought it was his father, but then he went and went back and he, he, he realized, no, it was him saving himself. <laughs> and... I like this energy. They're like, like showing it here, like um, knowing, you know, knowing your power, knowing that you can do this is an important piece of this. And it's like you're seeing yourself. Uh, and that's what this changes. Like, you know, you spark this and this big thing came and that gives you even more confidence because you were like, well, because I knew that my confidence and my worth is what spawned this. So I know I'm worthy of this um, because it's like this, you know, but that's what it reminded me of is like, you realize it because you already did it before, you know, it's like, oh yeah, boom, you know, and it's like that, that'll, that'll mess up your mind trying to overthink it. But I, I like the confidence that comes in here. And I, I like that there's this upgrade and this change with a great new opportunity that's coming your way. So I like it. So that's what they have for you, HTTPS. So many blessings to you. And then lastly, we got VD Jalan. Hello, VD. And hopefully I didn't miss anybody. If I did, my biggest apologies. I will be back next Friday. And um, if you want to, um, you know, find any other um, answers, I have a ton of free content on my main page, a ton of pick -a cards we just put out about the lunar eclipse tomorrow night with the full moon in Libra, uh, eclipse, um, alert with energy on, 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 I'm sorry, how you can make the most of that energy and did a pick a card around airy season that just started and also the equinox, which was also started last week that goes for three months. So a lot of um, free content out there if you're looking for some more guidance. Okay. All right, VD, you want to know general message for you. All right. You got the justice card coming in. We like that. Uh, card number 11, if 11 means anything to you, but they have that justice sword and the scales there. And what this is about is connecting to the higher realms, connecting to a higher place, seeing things from this higher perspective, allows you to cut away these old ways of thinking, these fears, these limiting beliefs that blind you and bind you and keep you trapped. And, you know, we're inundated with all those when we're younger. And so we've got a lot of those things that we can look at and go, why do I think that way? What's holding me back? What do I fear? What do I want? Getting out of our head and into our hearts and, and getting into our higher selves, seeing things from that higher knowledge, the higher perspective, it brings a lot of clarity in for you. Huge clarity. 
and um, and there's justice. There's this balancing of you know letting go or transforming these lower vibrational small t truths rooted in fear. They're being transformed to higher knowledge and wisdom that takes stuff off of here, puts it on here, so the it balances fast too. So I like this for you, you know, whatever these triggers are, these fears that have been coming up, uh, that are coming up for a reason. We're entering a big important time of Saturn going into retrograde, which is a huge time of super reflection. Um, it's almost like um, a Saturn return where we're, our beliefs are shaken up so that we can be freed from cages that we can move forward. So I like it for you. And that's what they have for you right now, VD. Hopefully that's helpful. And uh, thank you guys again so much for all the thumbs up. And uh, like I said, when I'm done, I'll here in a moment, I will um, post a comment listing in order all the readings I completed. It'll take me a minute here because there's quite a few. It's almost a two hour <laughs> session, sorry. But it'll help you find your reading faster. So that's what's important. So again, thank you guys so much for all your thirst of searching after spirit and for your patience and getting to these free readings. Remember, every second of every day of your life that you are unconditionally loved by the mother and the father of all things, our creator. Of course, I love you too. So until I see you guys again, enjoy the rest of your day or night, wherever you're out in the world. Enjoy the rest of your week. I'll be back for free readings on Friday. Uh, if you want to become a Zen Cricket member, um, I have cozy chats on Wednesday nights and uh, you have advanced access to my podcast and my pick of cards and any videos that I put out. And um, also, uh, if you become a Praying Mantis member, you have access to my Thursday night Q&A. Zen Cricket's $2.99 a month. Um, the Praying Mantis is $7.99 a month. And um, in addition to the two hour after each one of my sessions, I have a one hour also with them and we pull cards, we do past life readings, we're studying, we're reading. Right now we're reading a beautiful, powerful book. Oh my gosh, I forgot how amazing it is. I read it before, but we're rereading this and Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. Uh, Tolle. Um, so some great stuff if you're interested. Uh, links are in the description box of the video and to any of the other services I offer if you're looking for a personal reading, a relationship reading, past life reading, life purpose readings are half off until the end of this month, which is what, just a week away. Can you believe it? Um, so check it out. Everything is in the description box of the video. All right, everybody, much love to you. Hang in there. Take care. We'll see you soon.